Hello, and welcome to the inaugural podcast of Viewpoints, where we'll talk with San Diego State University experts about current topics in the news. I'm Lorena Nava Ruggiero, your host. With the Olympic Games coming up in August, the swimming world has been abuzz regarding a new swimsuit from Speedo, the Laser Racer. In studio to talk with us about the new suit is Dr. Brent Reschall, Professor Emeritus in the School of Exercise and Nutritional Sciences, and Dr. George Belch, Chair of the Marketing Department in the College of Business Administration. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, well, let's start off with a little background information for our listeners. Speedo introduced their laser racer, which they developed with NASA earlier this year. Since then, swimmers the world over have clamored for the suit, so much so that they've broken contract with their sponsor to wear the suit. At last count, 33 records have been broken while swimmers had the laser on. And some researchers say that it reduces times by as much as 2%. But Brent Marshall has another view. Brent? Um, no, uh, certainly I would dispute that. Um, I, I've looked at the first generation suits, the ones that preceded the announcement of uh, the Laser Racer in February, and also this one from uh, video records of what has happened. Uh, the previous suit was a real dog and cost <laughs> people swimming and actually slowed people down. Mm -hmm. uh, this new suit still retains some of the slowing characteristics, the enhancement of resistance on the surface, and plus the restriction of the swimmer's movements, which may be another factor that's in there, and also promoting having these slick surfaces on surfaces that don't need to be uh, slick when you're swimming. And so... Uh, I don't believe the suit uh, does what it should. If we look at the recent American trials, the four men's records, world records that were set by Michael Phelps and uh, uh, Pearsall, uh, they wore only from the waist down, which meant that they had more body surface without this material and these suits on than they did have on their suits. And since the suits were on the trailing part of the body, they couldn't do what they're supposed to do anyhow because they were in turbulent water. So um, as far as I'm concerned and I can make the argument for it by showing data and uh, performance data as well, uh, they, they don't do what they're supposed to do. So is it, um, I guess, kind of a, a placebo effect or an effect in the minds of the swimmers that think that they should get this suit because people are breaking records kind of a thing when it's not in actuality true? Well, the people who break the records are the people who are supposed to break the records. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're paid to wear these suits. And contractually, uh, some of them are paid to wear more suit than this, than really might help them or, or actually would make them go even worse, uh, particularly the distance swimmers. And so uh, the association between world records and these suits is uh, purely, a, in, from a statistical point of view, is spurious. It's an association. It's not a cause. Mm -hmm. But Speedo would like people to think that these suits are causing swimmers to go faster. And we saw the American trials recently. They didn't. Mm -hmm. I know that um, some folks have pointed out that Speedo just happens to sign really great swimmers and so maybe it's just the fact that Michael Phelps who won a ton of gold medals at the last Olympics he's wearing this suit but he's going to do good no matter what he's wearing is that what we're seeing that, that's true and with Michael Phelps the smaller the suit that is the less of the fabric he has on the better he goes because the events where he wore the full suit that's upper body and lower body uh, he was obviously disappointed in his times that he did. But when he only wore the lower part of his bodysuit, which some research that's been sponsored by, uh, by Speedo um, has shown that if you only wear the lower body part, you actually go slower. But that was on the first generation suits, and a lot of people question that research anyhow. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of Speedo's kind of... Um I guess promotion of this product. I know that's something that um, Dr. Belch can speak of, but in terms of coming from the side of the performance, is Speedo really just talking a lot about nothing? Uh, actually, from what uh, you've seen? I, I would be interested to hear what uh, Dr. Belch has to say about this because uh, there's supposed to be truth in advertising. And the research that came out in the first eight years showed that what Speedo was saying was wrong. The suits weren't doing what they're supposed to do. And in this second generation suit, one of the features that they touted as being performance benefiting, that of having ribs and channels on the suit, have been gotten away with. And now they're saying that this is a benefit not to have these ribs on. So, so <laughs> they either were wrong for eight years or deceptive for eight years, or now they've got it right. I think now they've got it 
more right than they had it before, but mm -hmm. it's still still not a thing that one should look at. 